Hello all my truth seekers, my name is Keisha and welcome to The Truth Show. In this video I will be discussing all of Donald Trump's lies regarding the war. Did you know that he is accountable for the, the majority of the horrible things that have happened thus far? Examples include the Gaza conflict, abortion rights, gun violence, and others. If you did not know already, you will after watching this video, I guarantee it. Please know that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth show, oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, some of you may have heard me say what others say. After departing the White House, Trump nominated Supreme Court judges and congressmen to ensure that anything he requested was carried out. Despite not being in the White House, Trump wields immense power because of these three people. The three appointees of former President Donald Trump have sealed the Supreme Court's conservatism for a generation, but they have used starkly different ways that differ in their respect for practical repercussions, their willingness to set boundaries for future disagreements, and their display of internal rivalry. Mm -hmm. Like Neil Gorsuch, or Gorsuch takes no prisoners. Brett Kavanaugh tries to appear a conciliator, meaning he likes to provoke internal conflict. Wonder who that sounds like. And Amy Coney Barrett is holding her fire for the moment. <laughs> Forgetting she's a woman, they have no respect for women, but who cares, she's a judge. Whether their differences intensify or fade will determine the Trump effect on the high court and how fast the law moves right, rightward regarding abortion rights, gun control, religion, and LGBTQ clashes. That is, they all have traditional viewpoints. Mm -hmm. They wish to return to the days of antagonism and discrimination. You know, the era when Caucasians were superior and cops had no limitations. Oh yes, Project 2025 is real. Take a look at these clips. Project 2025, a controversial plan for the next Republican presidency, has caused Democrats to sound alarms amid the intensifying presidential race. The 922-page plan has been organized by conservative think tank the Heritage Foundation and backed by more than 100 additional groups to serve as a blueprint for the next conservative president. Project 2025 told ABC News that it does not speak for any candidate or campaign, although Heritage's president has been quoted as saying his aim is institutionalizing Trumpism. Opponents of former President Donald Trump warned that the project could represent the goals of a potential Trump presidency if elected. If implemented, it would radically reshape the federal government and dramatically expand a president's authority. In its first section titled Taking the Reins of Government, the project reads the modern conservative president's task is to limit, control, and direct the executive branch on behalf of the American people. However, Trump has sought to distance himself from the project. So what are the goals of the project? The project suggests disbanding federal agencies like the Department of Education, an idea Trump has supported, and the Department of Homeland Security. On healthcare, the project recommends withdrawing the abortion pill Mifepristone from the market and stopping the drug from being mailed. Additionally, the project suggests that the Department of Health and Human Services should maintain a biblically-based social science reinforced definition of marriage and family. When it comes to climate change, Project 2025 suggests cutting federal money for research and investment in renewable energy and instead calls for the next president to stop the war on oil and natural gas. On economics, the proposals recommend cutting and restricting the use of food stamps, reducing the corporate income tax rate, cutting rates for high-income investors, and canceling federal student loan forgiveness programs. 
Regarding diversity, the project proposes eliminating several terms from all federal laws and regulations. Sexual orientation, gender, gender equality, abortion, reproductive health, reproductive rights, diversity, equity, inclusion, and more. On the issue of immigration, the project advocates for increased funding for a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border, for the implementation of fees for asylum seekers, and speedier processing at a premium price, immediately deporting unaccompanied children, a pause on funding for non-governmental immigration groups, and more. Trump has stated that he has no connection to Project 2025, claiming he knows nothing about it and that some of the things the project puts forward are ridiculous and abysmal. However, several of Trump's current and former advisors and appointees have authored or supported the project. Trump's official Agenda 47 and the proposals uplifted by the Republican National Committee already align in part with some of the Project 2025's goals. Although it's unclear how Project 2025 could impact a potential Trump presidency, Democrats have used Project 2025 in its efforts to motivate voters away from Trump. Folks, Project 2025 is the biggest attack on our system of government, our personal freedom that has ever been proposed in the history of this country. And Trump's advisors have created a 900-page blueprint of their agenda for a second term. They call it Project 2025. Oh, I'm not done yet. Because it has been told that Trump is the reason the war has begun again in Israel and Russia. Because he told them to not enter into a treaty or any agreement so that he can get reelected. And he'll cut them a better deal. Take a look at these clips. This is wild. Donald Trump called Bibi Netanyahu the Prime Minister of Israel and urged him not to cut a ceasefire deal until after the election because it would help Kamala Harris's campaign. This just broke on CBS. Take a listen. Yeah, we know that uh, Secretary of State Blinken is over there right now working with Netanyahu. The reporting is that former President Trump is uh, on the phone with form the, the Prime Minister of Israel urging him not to cut a deal right now because that is, it's believed that would help the Harris campaign. So Donald Trump literally wants to keep a war going and wants Americans to remain being held hostage to help his campaign. Not only is this immoral, but this seems like a violation of the Logan Act. Donald Trump has no presidential or governmental authority, yet here he is seemingly negotiating with a foreign leader on behalf of America. This definitely should be investigated. So yes, Trump is the reason for the crazy gun violence that was spewed prior to him leaving his presidency. As I told you in a previous live show, because he canceled the background checks for firearms. He also canceled the climate treaty we had in place with him saying, and I quote, global warning is just a conspiracy. So what happens next? The Lebanon leader is apparently murdered and they launched a major drone strike against Israel. And then Israel, whose military and, and armaments are important, but were laying low at the request of the US in order to negotiate, decide to destroy their safe camps after Trump promised to do secret deals and after the Lebanon attack, which they had been avoiding so by acts and threats alone, Trump is a citizen, but he is a menace to U.S. safety and has promised numerous times of war, mayhem, and havoc, implying that by law, America does not bargain with terrorists. 